there's just so much possible with Integromod. So I thought it's maybe cool if I show you seven of my favorite scenarios inside Integromod so that you can really see how I'm integrating and automating almost everything inside my business. So this is not really a full tutorial of all these scenarios. I just wanted to give you some ideas of what is possible. So let's just dive right in. So scenario number one, that is this one. I'm using this scenario to publish all my new YouTube tutorials like this one automatically to Twitter and to Facebook. So that works like this. Over here we have an RSS module that is scheduled to run every Thursday at 9 p.m. because I post a new tutorial every Thursday before 9 p.m. And then it's going to get the RSS feed for my YouTube channel and then it will get all the videos from in the last 24 hours basically and then we'll only get a maximum number of one video because if i would post multiple videos in that day i only want to post one to my social medias because i think it's maybe a bit weird if we would post two videos at the same time to for example twitter then we go over into this router but which we use to create multiple routes so first we go over here to the Facebook groups module. So then I'm posting the new video to my Facebook group. So I post it in this group. I post that as a Facebook page. Then this is the message that I post. And this maybe sounds a bit taggy, but what I'm basically doing here is I get the description of the video from that RSS feed. Then I split that description by new lines so that every paragraph basically is like a separate thing. And then I get the first one. So I use here, get the first paragraph basically. So the every first paragraph of my video is used as the Facebook post. So whenever I write my description, I just keep that in mind. And then I post the link of the video with it. Now then I do the same thing for my Facebook page. So you see over here, we create a post and then this is the post I create for this page. And over here we post a tweet and this one is slightly different because I wanted to write the tweets in advance myself. I did not want to get these from the description of the video. So what I did here is I created a data store. Sounds really taggy, but it's basically just like a fancy Google sheet inside Integromat. So over here you see data stores. We go down here, you see I have a data store called tweets. And if we here click browse, then you see that right now, these are the things that are inside this data store. So whenever I create a new tutorial, I click here at, then I post the URL of that video with the tweet with it. And then here we say post it. By default, it is no, because the tweet is not posted yet. So then when we go over here, we search a record inside that data store. So here you see if the video URL inside the data store contains, and then here you see the URL from YouTube and then we replace it here, this part of the URL by an empty string. So then we basically get only the ID of the video. Then it's going to continue if there was a match and then it will post that tweet to Twitter. So here you see record tweet and the video URL. So it's going to post the tweet and the video URL together. And then we update that row inside the data store. So here we say update data. Then here we have the key from that data store. So that is this thing over here. So it's basically like a unique number for each row. And then we set this posted to yes, so that I know, okay, this thing cannot be posted again. So then scenario number two, and that is this one. So I'm using this scenario to basically automatically handle all my online appointments. So people can book coaching calls with me. So they pick a spot inside my calendar with Calendly, and then I automatically send them a confirmation email with a link to our Zoom meeting so that the people can automatically join whenever it's time. And then I also create a bunch of Google Drive folders in which I store the recording of our call and the notes I made and also the survey that they completed. So that works like this. So we start over here with a Calendly module. So whenever somebody picked a spot inside my calendar with Calendly, then this instantly will start. And then I just send a confirmation email right away. So over here, I'm using the Gmail module. So my account, my Google Workspace account is connected to my domain. So then I can just send emails from my domain. So here I say from Max von Kullenberg, my email address, and then I want to send it to the NVT. So the people that just 
scheduled a call with me. Then the subject is details about our call. Then over here we have the content. So this is the email that I wrote in HTML just to look at it a bit nicer. You don't have to do that, but I just like to do that. So here I just say, hey John, thanks for booking a call with me. You can join the, for example, 20th of April with this link. And then over here I have the location which has the link in it because Calendly integrates with Zoom. And then I just say, looking forward to it. Then I add an event to a tool called Mixpanel. It's basically like a data tool in which I can measure all kinds of things. Then I also add an event to that. And then I search for contacts inside my email service provider, which is Active Campaign. And then over here we have a router. And then here, this path down here, if the contact was found, so if the ID of this module exists, then I want to add a note to the contacts profile. So here we say, okay, subscriber. This is the ID of the subscriber. So the ID of this module over here. And then this is the note that I want to add so that whenever I go to that context profile, I know like, hey, this person scheduled a call with me in the past. And then we also go always over here because there is no filter, right? So we only go here when the contact was found, but we always go over here. And then I want to find a folder inside Google Drive. So in Google Drive, I look in my folder client work. Is there already a folder with that person's name? Then if the folder was found, here folder found, the filter for this is file ID exists, then I know, okay, hey, this person already has its own folder inside Google Drive. So then what I do is I create a date folder. So it basically just says coaching call and then the date of whenever the call is scheduled for. And then inside that folder, I create another folder called recording. And I also create another folder inside the date folder called notes and also one called survey. And if the folder was not found, so here field ID exists, right? And then here folder ID not found. Then you see over here that we have a fallback route. So this will be used in case a bundle. So like the people basically inside this scenario could not continue from the router via any other route. So basically here, if the folder ID here was not found, then bam, it will just continue down here. And then we're first going to create a main folder inside Google Drive. So here in the folder client work, I create a folder and then it has the person's full name. And then here we completely capitalize that person's name. And then we basically do the same things again. We create a date folder in it. Then inside the date folder, we create a recording folder, a notes folder, and a survey folder. And this is really super duper handy for me because first I was always doing, creating all these things manually. I had to create the Zoom meeting manually, email it to people, and then also create all these Google Drive folders for them. So then number three, scenario number three, there's this one and this one I called my order confirmation and refund handler. So this is basically connected it to my card provider, which is Thrivecard. So whenever there is a new order, a new refund, something like that, then this webhook is going to get data. Then we continue over here into a router. So I wanted to create a different route for every different kind of event. So over here you see, for example, if we would go here, order refund. So this is the name, right? The label of it, just for my own reference. And then here I said, if the event is equal to order refund, then I know, okay, hey, the data that we just got from Thrivecard is a refund. Then we continue over here and then I wanna send that person an email. So I say, it sends an email to, and the subject is refund confirmed and then refund name. So that's the name of the product. And then I just say here, hey, John, I just wanted to let you know that I just processed your refund for, and then again, the product name, uh, it could take a couple of days, nah, blah, 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 blah. So, just saves me again, just a few minutes. So having to do that, then here order rebuild field. So if somebody would be on a subscription payment, something like that, then if the order rebuild event is failed or if the event yeah, is order rebuild field, then we continue over here and then I send them a friendly email. Like, Hey, please uh, update your uh, payment details, something like that. Now then if the order is success, so here event equal to order success, then I continue up here and I create a contact inside my email service provider. Then 
we check here, okay, what's the content actually created? Then we create a new user inside the playground. So I created a membership platform, which I host all my courses, which is called the playground. So I create a new user for them. Then I use a sleep module to wait for 30 seconds. So I just wanna give it some time to do all those things because I know that quite a lot of things have to happen. Then I wanna get the login details for that user. I wanna add a tag to active campaign. And then here we have a router in which I check here, okay, does this person already have an account? Like already has an account or did not have an account yet? Because if somebody did not have an account yet, then I'm going to send the login details. And if they already have an account, then I'm just going to send an email with like, hey, uh, I just unlocked the course inside your account, inside the playground, something like that. Now then down here, we have some other things. So for example, I also have a little subscription product. So then here I just check, is the event equal to order success? And also, also the name of this product contain daytime. That if yes, we create the API key for them, we parse the JSON of this module and then we send them that API key. And then down here, this is for my coaching call. So if somebody purchases a coaching call, I want to send a different email than for example, this one, because this is for the people that basically bought my courses. But if somebody would book a coaching call with me, then here I check, okay, order charges name contains call. Then we go here, then I check, okay, did they book a 60 minute call or 30 minute call? And then if they booked a 60 minute call, then I push them towards my survey. And then after that survey, they go to Calendly to pick a spot in my calendar. And then you saw in the previous example, what happens then. So then scenario number four, that is this one. And I'm using this scenario to validate new leads inside Active Campaign. So Active Campaign is my email service provider, which I use for all my email marketing. And I think a really big issue is that whenever people join your email list for maybe a cheat sheet, something like that, then it can happen that they, maybe when they sign up, they make a typo inside their email address, or maybe they even use a disposable email address. And I want to know that so that I'm not going to send emails to people who will never never open my emails. So that works like this. Over here, the first module, so our trigger module, is a webhook. And I added this webhook to one of my automations so that when people join my email list, that automation will start and this scenario will start. And then I'm using over here a never bounce module. I will also link to this tool in the description below so that you can check it out, I can really recommend it. And what you basically do here is you enter the contact's email address and then here, when we click run this module only, and then in this case, we would just type a random email address, right? Then it's going to tell you if that email address is valid or not. So in this case, here you see your result is invalid. Super duper useful. So then after that, we check that, we go into the router, and then we have different routes for the different results. So over here, you see that we have a route valid. So if the result, from this module is valid or is catch all or is unknown, then I just go up here, then I set a field inside Active Campaign. That field is called email validation. You see that over here, and I set it to the result. So then if the result would be valid, then that value would be valid, right? So then inside Active Campaign, I know I can safely send these people emails. Now then we have another route over here, for example, to disposable. So here, if the result is equal to disposable, then I set that same field inside Active Campaign again, but then this time this will be set to disposable. And then I unsubscribe them from my list so that I know that they're not going to get any emails from me. And then I send another email and the subject of this email is sick of spam, me too. And then over here we say, look, I get it. I'm also getting a lot of spam. And sometimes I also use a disposable email address because so many marketers are not respectful. I'm trying to be different. So please try again and sign up with a real email address. So I would just try to be a little bit funny so that I can maybe still win that person over to fill out their real email address. And then if the result is equal to invalid, then we go over here to another router and now it gets a little bit complicated. I hope you can still follow it. But what I sometimes notice is that people just make typos inside their email address. And these are really hard to tackle because you do not know what typo they made. But I noticed some common ones. So for example, people often type dot om instead of dot com or they type gmail wrong or they type dot xom or dot cmo and i thought okay now then if these email addresses end with these things 
Then I wanna validate the email address again. And then I'm going to replace here, replace, replace, replace. Replace here the email address. If there is .om with it, then I wanna replace it by .com. If there is Gmail in it, then I wanna replace it by gmail.com and so on. And then we go into another router and then inside that router or after that router, then if the email address then is valid, then I know like, hey, cool, I actually fixed the email address, right? So then I'm going to change the email of that person inside Active Campaign. Then I set the, the field, the same field, email validation to valid, and then I also add a note. And then if it's still invalid, then I could not fix it. So then here we set the field to invalid and we unsubscribe that person from my list. And then if people go down here, so here you see this is the fallback route. So if people cannot continue over to this path, then they go down this path. And then I also set that same custom field again to invalid and then we unsubscribe them from my list. So yeah, really, really handy trick to just keep your email list clean. This is super overkill for what I'm doing here. But again, I just really love to nerd out in this stuff. You can also just do it with these two modules. But I just wanted to show you another example, right? So I still have three more examples. But before we continue, I just quickly wanted to ask if you're enjoying this video so far. And if so, give this video a little thumbs up. That really helps me a lot. And if you like, I also created a really cool Integuma cheat sheet with some more tips and tricks about Integuma. So if you want, you can grab that one in the description below. So then example number five. So this is scenario number five. And then I'm using this scenario to send emails that are automated, that look, look like they actually came from me. So over here, we have a webhook. This webhook I added to my automation inside Active Campaign. So this is, for example, my free Active Campaign course. And after the third lesson, I check did someone click a link inside that email for up to eight hours? And after that time, we continue over into the if else. And then in this if else, I check, did somebody actually click that link? If yes, I trigger this webhook and then this scenario will start. Then over here inside these filters, I check which email I should send. So you see here over here, I have two different ones right now. And then if it's, for example, this one, how do you like the free active campaign course? Then I send those people an email for my email inbox. So you're from Maxwell Columber, hello. And then here, my email address to that person. And then I send an email, how do you like it? And then over here, it just says, hey, hey. Or if I know the first name, it just says like, hey, John, for example, I noticed that you just watched the third lesson of the free course. Awesome. How do you like the course so far? So yeah, you can also send emails inside Active Campaign, but I thought if I do it like this, it really looks like it comes from me. I would love to send emails to everyone who is following my free courses, but I just can't, but I love to send emails like this. And I noticed that when I started doing it this way, I'm actually getting lots and lots of replies from people that and thought it's really cool that I reach out to them and it just give me like really good feedback feedback. So yeah, just another simpler example of how you could use a scenario, right? Now then example number six, that is this one. So this scenario I'm using to set deadline fields inside Active Campaign. So I really like to do evergreen promotions. So I have a promotion with a hard deadline that I'm using a tool like Deadline Funnel or Timer Campaign to actually redirect people away from the checkout page when the deadline expires. But so in my emails, I want to mention when that deadline is. So what I did inside Active Campaign, I created a whole bunch of different custom fields. And then these custom fields will be set after I trigger this webhook inside an automation. Then boom, we go over here and I have two different time zones. I set it in, I set it for example, in my time zone, but also in the context time zone. And then here you see that I set contact fields here, email, and then we go down here and then you see that I have a custom field called deadline, why, 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 why? So there's like the year, then here the month, then here the month, but then like a number as the month, DO. So for example, uh, if it would be the, the 18th, then it would say, 18, so 18th, <laughs> not sure how to explain it, but I hope you get it. And then here, DDDD, so that is then the current day of the week, for example, Wednesday, and then here, deadline. So then here it would say the day of the month, so that I can really use these freely inside my emails. So I'm not sure if this is useful to you, but I thought it was maybe just a cool one to throw in. So then example number seven, this is this scenario, and I'm using this scenario to process all my surveys. So it's also the biggest one so far, but it's actually be the same 
simple as just doing the same thing over and over again, but then for all my different surveys. So I, for example, I have an unsubscribe survey. I have surveys at the beginning of my course. I have a survey at the end of my courses. I have writing prompts in free email courses that I have and so on. And then I'm using this scenario to process all those things. So whenever this webhook gets data from my form tool, it's called Superforms, then whenever somebody fills it out, then this module will start, then this scenario will start, and then I'm using these two modules to look for the contact inside Active Campaign. Then I'm sending some data over to Mixpanel so that I can actually see how many people are filling out those surveys. And then I'm using a router to basically organize this scenario because it's so big. So here I have a route called general website surveys, here playground surveys, and over here, free active campaign course surveys. And what I wanna show you is this over here because it has so many moving parts in it. I thought it's maybe cool to show you how that works. So if we would click here save, and then also here click run once, and I can also show you how this actually works. So over here, I have a lesson inside one of my free courses. So. If we go down here, you see a little writing prompt that I have in it. So I already filled it out. And then when I click here, finish the writing prompt, then this data will be sent over to the scenario. You see that it already started over here. So this is the data that we got. Then we search for the contact, the contact was found. Then we get all the info, we post it to Mixpanel. Then we go down this route. And then you see over here that we followed this path, you see here is like a one right and the other ones all have zero, zero. So then you know, okay, here, hidden form ID, there's this one, so we continue down here. And then we create a note inside Active Campaign so that I can see what they filled out. Then I add a row to a Google Sheet. So I have a Google Sheet with all the people's answers so they can just dive into it to, for example, see what people struggle with, how can I maybe make these uh, things better. And then what I thought is cool to show you is that I create a Google Doc from a template. So inside Google Docs, you can create templates and then you can just fill those templates out with the things that people answered. Then I download the document, then I email that document to people. So if you go over here, you see I got an email that says like, hey Emma, I added the content ideas you wrote in, as a PDF in the attachment. So over here you see now, this is the PDF that was generated and then I delete that document. And then if people set inside that survey over here, at the bottom right here, it says, when would you like to receive the next lesson? Then if people said, I want it now, so then this would be a match. Then I add a tag to that contact so that that contact jumps to the next part inside the automation. But yeah, I hope that these examples gave you a bit of inspiration of what you could use in Takermat 4, what kind of scenarios you can create. So I know that I went over them quite quickly. I didn't want this to be a super duper long video. So if you have any questions about any of the scenarios I just showed, just let me know in the comments below.